Hello and welcome to Nitro Talk. Uh, this one is going to be uh, a, a talker, a talking episode right here. We're not going to look at uh, a whole lot of stuff. If you're into nitro engines, vehicles, anything at all to do with the nitro side of the RC hobby, I would really appreciate it. Like and subscribe. Thank you very, very much. Um, so, I wanted to have a discussion today on nitro engine tuning. I've had videos before. I, I know I put out the uh, tuning for maximum power video, uh, which also, a uh, re little reminder, is something that, and I'm not saying something you shouldn't do, but uh, if you want to get the longest life out of your engine, uh, you really want to tune it for 90-ish percent of maximum power. Uh, you don't want it want to run it at its limit we're going to be doing something different with this one but that's just kind of an experiment right so but this is what this is what i want to talk about so uh for those who saw the recent videos on the sts dragon here uh we saw number one uh that it had substantial air leaks okay Air leaking from the back plate, air leaking from around the carburetor. Uh, we also we also saw that it did not have a stable idle. Uh, it absolutely did not have a stable idle. We had an idle that was going up and down, right? But what else did we see? We also saw that it ran like a champ on the track all right uh at the same time as having a horrible idol so that's what i wanted to touch on today uh, and maybe maybe not everyone else uh was like this but i i was like this so many years ago when i picked up uh the nitro side of the hobby and started to get into nitro engines uh, i mentioned before how there is that very steep nitro learning curve right um, it takes a while uh, to develop your ear uh, learn exactly how to adjust the needles on a nitro engine it takes some time to learn that uh, to where you can you can listen to an engine and you know exactly where you need to adjust, right? <clears throat> but at the same time, so, all right, me, when I was in that stage, okay, when I was cutting my teeth with nitro engines, when I was learning, I was going for... So I'm, I'm looking for a well-tuned engine, right? I'm trying to learn how to tune my engine properly. I was so hung up on the idle. I would, I would take nitro vehicles out to run them, and I would spend hours trying to get it to idle perfectly. I realize now, many years later, I don't focus much on the idol. Um, yes, a perfect, a perfect idol. Now this, uh, okay, let me touch upon this real quick. When, when an engine is tuned absolutely perfectly, okay? You got your beautiful bottom end, beautiful top end, and a beautiful idol, okay? When an engine is tuned like that, it is a lovely thing, right? Don't get me wrong. Uh, I kind of see, I, I have this, this way that I look at it. So a perfectly tuned engine, it should, when, when you peg the throttle, it takes off, right? It, you get your great top end. But when you let off of the throttle on your transmitter, it's already at an idol it, it doesn't drop down to idle it the, the 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 engine sounds this is when it's perfectly tuned 
idle top bottom. The engine sounds like when you release the throttle, the idle is already going. It doesn't, it's hard to hear a transition. It's like the idle is going in the background the whole time. And when you release the throttle, it, it, it kills the volume of the screaming high end. And you just hear that idle going in the background. Of course, it is changing from high RPM down to idle. It, it's, it's hard to, I hope y'all can understand what I'm saying here. When an engine is perfectly tuned, it doesn't, it, it drops to idle instantly and it stays right there at that smooth idle. It doesn't go up or down, okay? That's a perfectly tuned engine. You don't have to have a perfectly tuned engine. I have found lately that, that myself, I do not focus very much on the idle. What you need what is required to run your nitro engine is a smoke coming out of your exhaust at full throttle. When you are running your nitro engine at full throttle, you need to see a smoke trail coming out of your exhaust pipe. Other than that, a two-stage idle, a three-stage idle. Yeah, it's not the best. It's not perfect. But you can still go have fun running your nitro engine without a perfect idle is the gist of what I'm trying to get to here. It, that was not me. I was so hung up. To me, I thought... You have to tune an engine before you run it. And if it isn't idling properly, it's not tuned. That was what I was hung up on. And I spent, it took me, I've said this before, it took me a year of running nitro engines before I felt that my ear was confident that I knew what an engine needed by listening to it, okay? took me a year to get there. I don't think it, it it really should have. I was too hung up on finding a perfect idle. And when you have an air leak in an engine, you're pretty much never going to get a perfect idle. You're going to have idling issues. But as you saw with obvious air leaks, this thing was tearing the track to bits. So, that that's what I wanted to, to touch upon real quick. Don't get hung up. Now, learn learn that to, to get your perfect idol. You do want to have that skill. You do want to learn that. But don't let that ruin your day of running your nitro vehicle. Don't let trying to find the perfect stable idle prevent you from having a good time running your nitro vehicle that's what i wanted to say uh i i did i let it ruin lots of nitro running days uh trying to get that perp doing the pinch test which the pinch test is a valuable tool it will uh clue you in on uh, where, which way you need to go with your bottom end adjustment. Oh, that's the other thing I want to touch upon. Yeah. Remember, the low speed needle and the high speed needle are two totally different things. The high speed will affect the bottom end needle. But the bottom end needle does not really affect the top end needle. Um, if you can get great top end out of your uh, vehicle, out of your engine. Um, you don't, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a, a, a greatly tuned bottom end. All right. Uh, what else did I want to say real quick? Um, 
Oh, well, I got the STS in my hand here. I was thinking about something the other day. So I'm getting ready to uh, juice this thing up to the max, basically to see if the crank is going to snap, right? That's essentially what I'm doing. And some people uh, are interested to see what this thing is going to do. But here's my question. Are you more interested to see what the max power is going to look like on this? Or is everyone else also kind of hoping to see this thing blow up uh, with the crank snapping? Because I was thinking the other day, I, I had the, uh, the OS speed with the beautiful uh, crank. I was contrasting, comparing the uh, wear on... Or was that in my old video? Anyways, why am I even running it with the crank that could explode? I could throw another crank in here and probably run the engine for a long time without even worrying about uh, something going wrong with it. So I'm kind of thinking about that. Should I... So that's... Uh, let's get some opinions. Should I throw a different crank in here and, and run it? Or should we push it to the limits uh, and see if this crank is going to go bye-bye in the middle of a run? I'm kind of, I'm cool either way. Uh, I kind of, I've never had, I've lost two Conrods. I've had two uh, Conrods go on me uh, while running nitro engines. I've never had a crank snap. Um, yes, it would pretty much a good chance it would completely ruin everything inside of this engine. Um, but it'd be pretty cool, <laughs> wouldn't it? I think it would be pretty cool to, to have one blow up on me. No, it's not cool, uh, but it kind of is, right? So what's your opinion on that? Uh, throwing a different crank in here and running it or uh, pushing our luck uh, with the STS crank? Did I discuss everything I wanted to do on tuning? So let me reiterate real quick for anyone uh, who's still listening. Uh, you need a good smoke trail at high RPM, at high, high speed. Um, other than that, don't let uh, a, 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 an idle that is off stop you from having fun with your engine. Yes, learn how to find that perfect idol. Uh, it's a good skill to have. And I tell you what, generally speaking, um, for the most part, at when I'm at the track and there are other nitros there, for the most part, mine's running the best. Uh, I hear people, and I used to, uh, I used to every now and then I would kind of say, hey, buddy, that's that's running lean. You, you want to richen that up a bit. But people have to learn. I had to learn, right? I had to figure it out. Uh, if someone asks me for help, I will help them out with tuning their nitro engine. No problem whatsoever. I uh, love to help people. But uh, if someone doesn't want help and they are trying to figure it out on their own, I leave them to it. Uh, maybe make a comment to a buddy of mine about how he's trying to blow that thing up. But uh, you got to you got to figure out the nitro engine on your own terms. Whether you are looking at YouTube videos to figure it out, you got a friend helping you to figure it out, or you just got uh, an engine and a screwdriver and you're going to keep uh, fiddling with it until you figure it out. Whatever you're going to do. Uh, you have to do it at your own pace. The The nitro engine is uh, a cruel mistress, as they say. Maybe not. Um, that learning curve is steep. And uh, it's going to take some time. It is going to take some time before uh, you develop your nitro ear. But, again, I'm going to repeat it one last time. Don't let a wonky idol uh, stop you from having a good, fun day running your nitro vehicles. Make sure you got some smoke coming out of the exhaust 
and let her rip. All right, so that's that. We're going to, yes, we are going to run the Traxxas Top Fuel 33%. Um, I've had some people say, uh, oh, that's bad fuel. You know, I've heard Sidewinder is a bad fuel. Um, pretty much, you know what's a bad fuel? The fuel I started with, and I, and I bet that that's how it is for most people when they're learning how to run a nitro engine. Whatever fuel they were using at that point, that's the garbage fuel because they were using it and they couldn't get good uh, results out of their engines. Uh, but So they linked the two together and no, that ain't it. Um, you were learning how to, to tune a nitro engine. It wasn't the fuel. Uh, it was, for me, on some engines, it was the carb was leaking. Uh, especially that Hyper 21 three-needle carb, that third needle notorious for leaking. Um, but I tell you what, all those times that I was trying to get that Hyper 21 to idle because of that leaking third needle... I probably could have been out on the track uh, running it balls to the wall and having a great time, uh, but just when I would stop running. Oh, that's the other thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad I remembered. Loading up. Okay. So, yes, if you're too rich on the bottom end, your engine will load up, and if you sit and idle for a long time, you know, it'll load up with fuel. You go to hit the throttle and it'll stall because it's uh, full of fuel. But how long are you really idling? That's the other thing I was thinking. How long, when you're at, especially out on the track, uh, like I run my buggy on a track, how much idling am I doing? You're not really doing any idling. You're running it... Uh, when you let off the throttle, you drop down to idle, right? So there's a second or two at a time uh, you are idling when you're running a nitro engine. So if, if, if even if you are, are too rich and you're loading up, as long as you have good bottom end, see, that's the thing. You need to have good bottom end response and you need to have good top end on your nitro engine. Yes, a well-tuned bottom end is going to give you better bottom end response, okay? But um, you, you, you can still have good bottom end without a good idle. With a two-stage idle, with an idle that's a little high, uh, you can still have good bottom end. As you saw, this, the bottom end was beautiful on this, on the track with a wonky idle. So yes, learn how to do, learn your bottom end, learn how to do a beautiful, nice, steady idle, but don't let it stop you from having fun with your nitro vehicles. I probably said that six times now. I'll let y'all go. Uh, we will, there's a race this weekend. I almost uh, kind of wish there wasn't because I wanted to uh do some experimenting, right, and get some video, but uh, there is a race this weekend. I'm not 100% positive if I'm going to run in it. I'm kind of thinking about it. Um, if I do, though, I will be running the STS in the race, uh, conservatively, like it is now, with the 7mm Venturi, my 20% fuel, uh, you know, I always ran 25. I tried to stay at 25% most of the time, but I can't really find it anymore. It's pretty much 20 or 30. So I've been running 20. I had bad luck with 30%, but again, that was many years ago. Uh, I'm sure I'd be fine with it now. I just wasn't as confident with nitro engines then. So... It was giving me issues. I dropped to 25. 25 was working great, so I kind of stuck with it. You get into habits in nitro. All right, I think this is long enough. We talked about tuning. I will see y'all in the next video. Uh, have a great day.